And here we are in front of the 2019, and uh, this is a stunning car. I think we've, we've spoken about this one before. Yeah. It's the 50th, um, Bayside yep. Blue, hot, 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 you know? Special. Special. Not like, many. Like the owner. <laughs> So tell me, what's the first thing that strikes you about this engine bay, Paul? The similarities, really, to be yeah. honest with you. This, we are talking, what, what did we work? 11 years. Well, this is like a barrel, it's a red top. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then that's what it's like, isn't it? Yeah. After all the progression yep. and uh, the history of these cars, they, they're amazing machines. And you look yes. under the bonnet, it's like, here we are 11 years later. Um, this is red. Red. Uh, a few less tubes. But a bit of silicon hanging out. <laughs> yeah, but one really big feature. What is it, Paul? It, um, Zumi Shioya. Zumi Shioya. Z he built the engine, yeah. Has put his name to this one, yeah. so they're pretty happy with these so When ones. you find a bit of silicon that long in the pickup, <laughs> you ring <laughs> You know who to call. Zumi? But I guarantee you there is no silicon in this pickup because he's gone and put his name to it. He's pretty happy with this version. I think they copied that, the Japanese, off like all the German prestige people. Yeah. So this we've got... What was his name? Wolfgang Herm Herman Mummerfist yeah. or something that did yeah. that one. Then Helen. Yeah. Oh. Jeffrey. <laughs> it was a Imagine if they did it yeah. out at home. Yeah. I think he's, he had one. Where's he's Wayne? One. He's, he's Wayne Francis. Yeah. Oh, work experience boy, I think was on. Yeah. <laughs> Webb. <laughs> Webby. Oh, yeah, no, nah, it wouldn't, wouldn't, have, wouldn't have had that romantic sort of notion to it out there. No, but. no. Late model. Um, what's another big difference in this one? Different ECU. That's true. Mm. And 50 kilowatts somewhere. Is that what we worked out? Yeah, so? because this one... 60 maybe. This one runs 11 pounds boost standard. This one runs 15. Is that right? Yeah. We found that's what they kilowatt. did. They just powered them up over yep. the years. But yep. different ECU, um, not so different, but things are laid out differently. So that okay. the people that allowed you to tune these back in the day just didn't support this ECU anymore. Right. Uh, Ecutec 2, I think. For okay. how long, I don't know. Um, but everyone at high level now just chucks an aftermarket ECU into them because they're so good. For yep. example, uh, let me walk just past you and I'll come back. Ooh. I just saw this sitting there. That looks fancy. This is... <laughs> Careful. This is what we <laughs> use. I like to use the Cyvex powertrain control system in them, plugged straight in. Is this a paid commercial? No, but uh, um, <laughs> if you could, guys. I've been a big supporter for a yep. long time. <laughs> Help me, like, you know, get Paul a nice sports jacket to wear in these videos. <laughs> but, yeah, good ECU, plug straight in, very programmable. Yep. That's what we run in John's car. Plug big, and play? Big plug and play. Plug straight yep. in. Yep. I'll just put it back for a minute. And immensely tunable because um, I know for a fact that that one that you've run in John's car punched out a pretty big number the it other did, day. It did, but we're not to talk about that today. We're going to do that later tonight when we go to the... Roll racing. Roll racing. Yeah. Shh. Stay. What was that? Any anyway. computer's just fallen over. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it's shockproof and waterproof. Um, yeah, so not a lot of differences in the engine. And it's still tumbling. I reckon there's something alive in there. Um, get the idiot videographer first when you come out of there. Might be the gimp in the box. Um, yeah, so not a lot of differences here. Um, just more power, bigger boost. It's got the bigger inlets. Revised camshaft profiles, they say. I don't think so. Less silicon floating around in the motor. <laughs> same air boxes, same math sensors. It's a VR38DE. Same Conrod, same pistons, same everything. Yeah, yep. And it's a good engine. Bit old hat now, so it's not direct injection, it's still port injection, and that's why it doesn't meet any Emissions. current legislation yep. anymore. Yep. And, you know, it's a real ask to try and get these old um, port injection sloggers actually working. So that's covered off the engine differences. Um, we'll talk about the trans differences when we go out there. Yeah, okay. It's quite fun. Um, there are a lot of big trans differences between that one and that one. Um, the design's the same, but there's a lot of intricate detail changes. Other than the bodies, Paul's going to discuss the bodies in a moment, because he's the body guy, as you can see. <laughs> um, Rounds a shape. There is. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's differences in the front end geometry of these cars. You've got different steering arms or different lower control arms. So yep. you can't put uh, 11 plus on the earlier cars. I think it might be 14 plus mm. on the earlier cars because they've got different camber set yeah, up. And okay. if you do, it just doesn't work. Well, you can't. You've got to change a whole front end. You can't just change one side. So yeah, right. All the steering arms are different lengths and all that yeah. sort of thing. So, so that's a different. 
keep an eye on that. The adjustable suspension is different because they had three modes. What was it? Uh, race, normal, and comfort. Yep. And with the adaptive damper control stuff, yep. and you just couldn't tell the difference between them. <laughs> it was hard, hard, or hard. Yes. Um, these ones here, the comfort is really soft. Okay. So you can tell the difference. I think that may be the American influence coming in. I think so. Or just people saying this button doesn't work. <laughs> to um, mash it harder. This still makes all the same rattles and noises that the early ones make. And when you pick one up in Australia, well, I don't know where it's like anywhere else in the world, but they gave you a document saying, don't come back. They made you sign it. Don't come back complaining about rattles and noises. Yep. Because they all rattle. And they all have full of noises. Most of that is from the... Transmission. No. Transmission's yes. back there. What's back there? Talk tube. No. Yes, it is. It's a bell housing. Well... Talk, it has a tail shaft, not a talk tube. Is that right? It's got a carbon fibre one-piece tail shaft that spins continually. Which, which I thought was a torque tube, but we'll discuss that later. Take well, that offline. We'll have an argument about this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, yeah. let's call postage stamp. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so the bell housings are ab absolutely terrible in these cars. From this one to this one, they didn't locate um, the shaft in it properly and it will flog it, chop itself out in a bearing and start and duck, 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 yep. duck, 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 yep. You've probably heard that a thousand yeah, times. Yeah, I have. I have. I always thought that was just transmission noise coming forward, but no. Yeah. It's a bell Same. housing rattling. Yeah. You can get another one and go, dum, 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 and the yep. tail shaft when they're really bad. Because the driving around in these, it almost feels like backlash when you're going slow. Yeah. It's or when, when it slows down, things. if you pull it into gear and it's got a shitty tune or it's got cams or something, you pull it and yeah. 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 It's, that's the tail shaft flopping around. the sounds of unreliability and everything else, but in these... So we fixed it. it. I had an engineering firm here yep. um, do a bell housing mod, and we were the first people in the world to do it, where they supported the shaft properly and locked it into position and pinned it properly and did a lot of machining on the, on the bell housing, and they're silent then, and they're great. Uh, the solution, I still see people doing it now because they're silly, is that they just go out and buy new bell housings at two and a half grand a, yeah, a pot. Right and in, in, like this car's done, I don't know, what, 12,000 Ks? It's noisy. So people are still buying them? People still go and do the standard ones again. And they're yeah. just, it's got inbuilt engineering problems. Yep. And yeah, it never really works out for them. But eventually they buy a proper bell housing and it's all done. So yep. anyway, we'll, more on the transmission later, Paul. Tell us about some of the body differences, how you see them. We'll start on this one in the front end. The, to me, the body differences are what makes all of these different all the way along yeah. all the years. I, I'm going to go out on a limb here. <laughs> Actually, it's I not going to be. It's not going to be. <laughs> it's not going to be groundbreaking either. But the differences are so subtle; they're so minor you think? that it is just the spoilers and the bars and the little bits of trim. and the headlights there's, and the mounts and the over. Yeah, but over the years, there's been what the. T spec, the R spec, the there's even it's a R spec. It's not a Mustang. Pop. There's a there's a G spot that's supposedly really rare, fairly hard to find. Uh, it's a G pack Tirana, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. But you know what I'm getting at. There was so many that all they were were a, a trim yeah. variation. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of colours. A couple of colours. Yeah. I'm not saying that it was uh, lazy, <laughs> but I guess they got onto a good thing and they didn't want to change it too much. Would well, you agree? Well, it's like when you're broke and you're trying to cook every night for the family. One night it could be bangers and mash, then one night you can add some peas, one night you can add some corn. <laughs> you know, it. mix it up a bit. That's uh, it. And this is the problem, this and fuck. Is that yeah. they didn't have the funds to keep developing this old dog. One soul mate got arrested and smuggled out of the country. Yeah. <laughs> and Renault sort of, yeah, they, they gave him a bit of grief, didn't they, there for a while? Well, I and think so. It meant that this car, which was um, good, yeah. didn't really evolve in any way, shape or form. It sort of just stayed on its greatness. It did, but the body design itself is one of the, well, not one of the first, but one of the most iconic proper Japanese only designs. It it's, wasn't influenced by anybody else. It was supposed to be based on a transformer because this was supposed to be the turret yeah. of the machine. And it, it is, nothing else looks quite like it. Um, I remember when I bought one, for my wife, she didn't really know what they were. And I said I was buying one, I was gonna bring it home. And she goes, I don't want one of those Japanese horrible things. And oh, they look like, she called them redundants. <laughs> All GDRs, because they're just redundant. Yep. And, oh, yep. and then when I got it I home, it. Lisa was like, oh, 
It's a nice looking car. I didn't yeah. expect it to be that yeah. nice. It was red and shiny. And then, yeah, and then and now I hear all about it. Oh, I wish I still had that, you know. Yep. But she forgets the way it used to tram line down the road at 60 k's an hour. And yep. These cars don't make sense until you're doing over the speed limit in them. Yeah, or on Then a they track. make sense. Or on a track. The faster you go, the lighter they feel. Yep. yep. And they're not that heavy, really, anyway. People said they were heavy, but they're not. 1,700 kilos is pretty normal. It's fairly yeah. acceptable. That's what a car... At the time, it was heavy. Yeah, but yep. you know everything goes up. You know now it's Corolla weight. You know that's thing. exactly right. Uh, yeah, and you know a Model Three weighs more. It does indeed. Than one of these. So and they've all grown in size, haven't they? they? Have. A little car. This was considered a big car for a two-door coupe. Yep, it, it was a monster. I mean, it didn't fit into any category no, back and, in the day. And when you got the seats in the normal position, the front seats, there's actually pressing against the cushion in the rear so yeah, you've you got no to have legs. no legs <laughs> none you've got to just be legless do you know anyone who's ever sat in the rear me you've sat it well i don't have much no legs. legs yeah, yeah of course you know <laughs> you kind of <laughs> got to squish up and push a passenger into the into the dash speaking of which let's have a look at the differences in the interiors